squatting is an action of occupying an abandoned or unoccupied area of land or a building, usually residential, that the squatter does not own, rent or otherwise have lawful permission to use. Author Robert Newwert suggested in 2004 that there were 1 billion squatters globally. By 2030, he forecasts there will be 2 billion and by 2050, he predicts 3 billion squatters. Yet, according to Keija Reeve, squatting is largely absent from policy and academic debate and is rarely conceptualized as a problem, as a symptom, or as a social or housing movement. Squatting can be related to political movements, such as anarchist, autonomist, or socialist. It can be a means to conserve buildings or to provide housing. Overview Worldwide in many of the world's poorer countries, there are extensive slums or shanty towns, typically built on the edges of major cities and consisting almost entirely of self-constructed housing built without the landowner's permission. While these settlements may, in time, grow to become both legalized and indistinguishable from normal residential neighborhoods, they start off as squats with minimal basic infrastructure. Thus, there is no sewage system, drinking water must be bought from vendors or carried from a nearby tap, and if there is electricity, it is stolen from a passing cable. Besides being residences, some squats are used as social centers or host giveaway shops, pirate radio stations or cafes. In Spanish-speaking countries, squatters receive several names, such as Ocupar in Spain, Chile or Argentina, or Paracaidistas in Mexico. Politics squatting by necessity is in itself a political issue. Therefore also a statement, or rather a response, to the political system causing it. During the period of global recession and increased housing foreclosures in the 2000s, squatting became far more prevalent in Western, developed nations. In some cases, need-based and politically motivated squatting go hand in hand. According to Dr. Keija Reeve, who specializes in housing research in the context of adverse housing circumstances, limited housing opportunity and frustrated expectations, Squatters effectively remove themselves from and defy the norms of traditional channels of housing consumption and tenure power relations. Bypassing the rules of welfare provision, typology Dutch sociologist Hans Preit separates types of squatters into five distinct categories. Deprivation-based, i.e., homeless people squatting for housing need, an alternative housing strategy, e.g., people unprepared to wait on municipal lists to be housed take direct action, entrepreneurial, e.g., people breaking buildings to service the need of a community for cheap bars, clubs, etc., conservational, i.e., preserving monuments because the authorities have let them decay. Political, e.g., activists squatting buildings as protests or to make social centers. Legality in many countries, squatting is in itself a crime. In others, it is only seen as a civil conflict between the owner and the occupants. Property law and the state have traditionally favored the property owner. However, in many cases where squatters had de facto ownership, laws have been changed to legitimize their status. Squatters often claim rights over the spaces they have squatted by virtue of occupation, rather than ownership, in this sense. Amicus Colin Ward comments, Squatting is the oldest mode of tenure in the world, and we are all descended from squatters. This is as true of the Queen of the United Kingdom, with her 176,000 acres as it is of the 54% of householders in Britain who are owner-occupiers. They are all the ultimate recipients of stolen land. For to regard our planet as a commodity offends every conceivable principle of natural rights. Others have a different view. UK Police official Sue Williams, for example, has stated that squatting is linked to antisocial behavior and can cause a great deal of nuisance and distress to local residents. In some cases there may also be criminal activities involved. Perceptions of squatting The public attitude towards squatting varies, depending on legal aspects, socio-economic conditions, and the type of housing occupied by squatters. 
In particular, while squatting of municipal buildings may be treated leniently, squatting of private property often leads to strong negative reaction on part of the public and authorities. Squatting, when done in a positive and progressive manner, can be viewed as a way to reduce crime and vandalism to vacant properties. Depending on the squatter's ability and willingness to conform to the surrounding socio-economic class of the community, which they reside. Moreover, squatters can contribute to the maintenance or upgradation of the sites that would otherwise be left unattended which would create an abandoned, dilapidated and decaying neighborhoods within certain sections of moderately to highly urbanized cities or boroughs, with one example being NYC's Lower Manhattan from roughly the 1970s to the post 9 11 era of the new millennium. Adverse possession Adverse possession is a method of acquiring title to property through possession for a statutory period under certain conditions. Countries where this principle exists include England and the United States, based on common law. However, some non-common law jurisdictions have laws similar to adverse possession. For example, Louisiana has a legal doctrine called acquisitive prescription, which is derived from French law. Africa. There are large squatter communities in Kenya, such as Kibera in Nairobi. A BBC News report described it as follows. The first thing that hits you here is this rich stench of almost one million people living in this ditch, in mud huts, with no sewage pipes, no roads, no water, no toilet, in fact, with no services of any kind. An estimated 1,000 people live in the Grande Hotel Bira in Mozambique. The Zabaline settlement in the City of the Dead are both well-known squatter communities in Cairo. In South Africa, squatters tend to live in informal settlements or squatter camps on the outskirts of the larger cities, often but not always near townships. In 1994, when Nelson Mandela was elected president, it was estimated that of South Africa's 44 million inhabitants, 7.7 .7 million lived in these settlements. The number has grown rapidly in the post-apartheid era. Many buildings, particularly in the inner city of Johannesburg, have also been occupied by squatters. Property owners or government authorities can usually evict squatters after following certain legal procedures including requesting a court order. In Durban, the city council routinely evicts without a court order in defiance of the law, and there has been sustained conflict between the city council and a shack dwellers movement known as a Balali base, Myondolo. There has been a number of similar conflicts between shack dwellers, some linked with the Western Cape anti-eviction campaign, and the city council in Cape Town. One of the most high-profile cases was the brutal evictions of squatters in the N2 Gateway homes in the suburb of Delft, where over 20 residents were shot, including a three-year-old child. There have been numerous complaints about the legality of the government's actions and, in particular, whether the ruling of the judge was unfair given his party affiliations and the highly politicized nature of the case. Many of the families are now squatting on Symphony Way, a main road in the township of Delft. The city of Cape Town has been threatening them with eviction since February 2008. Asia, India and Mumbai, there are an estimated 10 to 12 million inhabitants, and 6 million of them are squatters. The squatters live in a variety of ways. Some possess two or three-story homes built out of brick and concrete which they have inhabited for years. Gita Nagar is a squatter village based beside the Indian Navy compound at Kalaba. Squatter colony in Millard East has existed since 1962, and now, people living there pay a rent to the city council of 100 rupees a month. Durawa is a community of one million squatters. The stores and factories situated there are mainly illegal and so are unregulated, but it is suggested that they do over $1 million in business every day. Other squatters live in shacks, situated literally on a pavement next to the road, with very few possessions. Activists such as Jock and Arpa them are working for better living conditions for slum dwellers.
Malaysia Many of Malaysia's squatters live on land owned by Karita Pitana Malayu as well as at construction sites. Philippines also called informal settlers. Squatting is a major issue in the Philippines, especially but not exclusively in urban areas of the Philippines. Squatting gained notice after World War II, when people built makeshift houses called Barong Barong inside abandoned private land. In the late 20th century, the Philippine government has made separate attempts over the years to transfer some squatters to locust housing projects, such as projects in Tondo, Taguig, and Rodriguez, Rizal. Philippine law, and society more generally, distinguishes between squatters who squat because of poverty and professional squatters who squat in hopes of getting a payment to leave the property. Sri Lanka Taiwan The National Property Administration Ministry of Finance website has an online system to report squatted lands. Thailand though eviction has reduced their visibility or numbers in urban areas, many squatters still occupy land near railroad tracks, under overpasses, and waterways. Commercial squatting is common in Thailand, where businesses temporarily seize nearby public real estate and roll out their enterprise, and at closing time they fold it in and lock it up, thus avoiding the extra cost of having to rent more property.